I started when I was 18. It was hard. Like my first show, as I mentioned, like I looked up in the yellow pages. Like I like walked, I physically saw a sign for an open mic and then looked up the yellow page. I had the comedy Bible by Judy Bloom or whatever her name is, Judy Carter. <laughs> and um, like I, I walked into the Comedy Connection in Boston. And I was like, I'd like to do comedy at some point. Like, and um, I literally called and like left voicemails being like, hi, I'd like to do stand-up comedy. I was never a huge specials guy, weirdly. I don't like comedy specials, as we're here promoting my comedy special. I like trying to see comedy live it's so much better. It loses so much translation. I, I don't want, I don't feel like a big spectacle act. I think I would feel weird if I had like, and lights that come down and I'm in a leather suit or whatever. It just, uh, you know, Louis called it small ball. I opened for Louis C.K. at the L.A. Forum, and afterwards he was like, Joe List playing small ball at the Forum. I just wanted to be very basic, kind of, you know, bare bones stand-up comedy. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. I gotta go. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Uh, this year's material went well. Like, people were really positive about it, and I was really happy. We did a live premiere, which we're gonna do for this one as well, and people were extremely nice and sweet, and it won an award, which I just remembered I haven't gotten. They were supposed to mail it to me, a telly award. It was like an award award. I haven't received that. I should look into that. I gotta call Jason Cat. I gotta set aside an hour to talk to Cats. Yeah, it went it went well. And then at, at Skankfest, it won um, Best Special of the Year, which was funny because they voted before Ari's came out, and I think Ari might have beat me. But uh, if it, but they voted, and uh, that was really nice and, and touching. So um, people seem to like it. I mean, everyone could be lying to me. It's possible. I get that question a lot, how do I know when I'm ready to shoot a special? For me, it's like, it's when I, I'm never um, working towards, I'm never like, I'm gonna train and get a new special. That material's out and here I go. I'm building an act. I don't approach it that way. For me, it's more like I'm on the road 40 something weeks a year and basically by, you show up Thursday, you do your jokes and then Friday you do two shows. By Saturday, you're like, I can't tell those goddamn jokes again. Let me try to come up with something. And basically, I write out of, uh, I try to come up with new stuff out of being just tired of telling the other jokes. And I do so many spots and shows that you're like, you can have a joke that's three months old and you're like, I am sick of this fucking joke. I gotta come up with something new. So for me, when I have m over an hour, when I'm like, I have an hour, and then I have those other jokes that I didn't even get to. That's when I'm like, let me record this stuff so I can get that out of my mind. A lot of it is just kind of like, it's almost like ADD. I can't keep that stuff, much stuff in my mind. So I'm like, let me record that so I can get rid get it out of my mind. And um, so it's kind of like that. I'm like, I, I feel like it's ready because I'm tired of this stuff. And I have other stuff that I'm trying to, I have an abundance of material. I always like Louis said one time about, you know, they're like chapters in a book you're writing. It, it's, it, again, I never, I never set out to be like, here comes my new special. This special is gonna tackle this or that. It's just whatever happens or comes to me, uh, I record it and put it out. I don't, I don't like to, try, I try not to make comedy bigger than what it is. I'm a guy, telling jokes in a basement. And um, I think just that, simplistically, is a really cool, fun thing. Maybe it's, I have low self-esteem, but I, I look at it myself as like a club comic telling jokes for an hour. And I wanted to come across that way. It was like, ah, oh, we, we bought a couple beers and we went and watched a guy. And uh, we had a good time, it was funny.
I want to look. I, I want to come off as a funny guy telling funny stories. It's me, Joe List. Oh, thanks. Thanks to that lady. I like that lady that yelled. Yeah, you're the one. Um, well, this is weird. Hey, uh, I got a bunch of bunch of comedians here that are hilarious. Are you guys excited? You go crazy. And I'm gonna do comedy too. Uh, I want to bring your MC out. He's uh, one of my closest friends. We started together uh, longer ago than I'd like to admit. And uh, he's one of my favorite people ever. And he's one of my favorite comics. And he's hilarious. And you're going to love him. Mike Whitman, everybody! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's weird again. It's like... I, I have... Um, I try to sort of minimize everything. It's going, I'm just doing a show. It felt exciting and, um, but you're like, all right, this will be good. Let me, let me do a good show and try to be of service to the people that came. We sold it out, it was exciting and, you know, the family came and uh, it was a big deal. It was exciting because I, I started there. So it's, you're just kind of sitting in a hotel going, man, this is crazy. Like I said, like I, I walked into a, restaurant when I was 18 and said I'd like to be a comedian and then you're back in that town with a sold out thousand people which is uh, a big deal it was all a dream I used to read word up magazine something pepper and heavy D up in the limousine hanging pictures on my wall are we are we ready I'm emotional uh, I've been friends with this guy for 20 years please help me welcome my good friend Joe Liz folks Joe Liz Thank you. Thanks very much. That's, oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. That's very sweet. I feel like some of you needed to stretch. That's what happened. I feel like a bunch of you have no idea who I am, and I appreciate you being like, wait, what? It felt pretty normal, and it was a fun hang. You know, I had my friend Mike Whitman, who I started with, and my wife, and Jason Tanner, who's you know, one of my close buddies. And, um, yeah, it felt good. It was, it was great. And um, it's hard to, in the moment, be like, There's, this is it. Like, you want to be like, this. I'm going to say this. When I finish, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be like, Boston, you're number one, you know? And then you get there, you're just doing a show. You try, I try to keep it, um, I'm a comic doing a show, and it's a good show. Yeah, women, that's right. Yeah, me and the chocolate chip cookie. Oh, you guys all from Whitman? We could have done this at fucking Skate Town. At Randolph, okay. We don't have to yell all the towns, but... Um... I was in Cincinnati, my uh, agent and manager called me and said, we're thinking about trying the Wilbur, what do you think? We can, we can do this April 15th, which is Patriots Day, which is I go home every year, it's a New England holiday. Um, and uh, it, was, yeah, it was one of the best nights of my career. It's embarrassing. I don't know if you guys have ever left Massachusetts. It's quite humiliating. You're like, I'm from the South Shore. Your friends are like, oh, you grew up on the water? I'm like, no, about 55 minutes from the water. They're like, what? And hopefully I can do it every year. So it was, uh, it was awesome, and the show was great. I wanted to have a bunch of friends around, so I had too many openers. I blew it. <laughs> I, had, I, I went on stage an hour into the show. Um, they got tired, but um, no, it was great. My ex-girlfriend was there. That was fun. You know, you got to really let them know. 